So, Max. Yes. What's uh, what's going on with uh, <laughs> the your film? Yeah, your documentary. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your documentary. We're planning on uh, taking it to the to India, and then on to Frankfurt, and then to New York. Hopefully, we can follow you around. If that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, that's a lot of travel. That is going to be a lot of travel. We were going to yeah. go to New Zealand, but I think that that's going to be just way too much. And there's a week, I think, gap between that, because you're going to Australia yeah. next after New Zealand, I think. So. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you want to know about the documentary? The state of it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. How's, how's it? We got well, like, what, 90 us. hours of footage well, of Tom us. speaking? <laughs> yeah, well, tell us what... What is it and what do you aim to do? And, and, uh... Well, I guess I got to start from the beginning. So originally, I guess I discovered your work in 2012. And uh, from there, I, I wanted to direct something or direct a play or write something. And a friend of mine encouraged me to come do this, to shoot. The documentary, you just come down and do it. So I've never made a documentary before, and uh, I don't think I'll ever do another one. <laughs> uh, so we packed up the stuff, the cameras, got the crew together. We came down to to the uh, U.S. Space and Rocket Center. That was the first one, the first shoot. And my, I didn't really know what my goals were other than just to film and shoot everything. And, um, but it's, it's evolving into less about trying to, I guess, persuade an audience or teach them about MBT or virtual reality. It just seems in an hour documentary or an hour and a half documentary almost to be, I don't want to say impossible, but it's very, very difficult to tell a story with that. So it's more of um, the focus is just on Tom Campbell, the man, the person that is Tom Campbell. Um, because your model, um, I was telling Donna this, is probably one of the most, well, to me, the most inspiring pieces of artwork that I've ever experienced. It's changed my entire <laughs> being. And perspective on 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 everything. So I wanted to share that with people. I wanted them to see this. So that's really the inspiration. That's what drove me down to the uh, first shoot three years ago. Hmm. Has it been three years? Wow, three years. It's weird being on this end of the camera. <laughs> Max, uh, tell us what changed. At what point did your view change? At what point did you really realize you were onto something big? Um, <clears throat> well, it started so 2012 or 20, yeah, 2012. I was going through some. I was in New York, and I was going through some depression. Um, I didn't really know. I don't, it was just, it was a really tough time. And so I, I, my dad was a, he's a business guy, so he was always into Tony Robbins and the mm -hmm. New Thought Movement, motivational mm -hmm. speaking, so that's where I went first. So I think I, I took, I, I downloaded every Tony Robbins thing illegally, downloaded all the Tony Robbins DVDs I could and uh, YouTube videos and from there, I don't know if it was on a YouTube, the YouTube feed, I guess it does an algorithm, and it brought up Tom's, uh, one of the videos. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and I, I can't remember which one it was. I'll have to, anyway, I clicked on it, and um, <laughs> I was in a, I was almost in a trance because I watched it for five minutes, but I had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> it was just so complex. I had no idea. And I didn't get back to you after that. It took me some time that I, I guess it either just kept popping up on my feed, and then I would go back to it and I'd you know, go to something else. And eventually I 
watched, oh, and it was tough to watch. It took me an entire summer uh, to really get a grasp on it. Uh, the New York uh, workshop hmm. was the one. I didn't go to the Calgary one. I went to the New York first. And that was the first real, after I got to the end of that, intention was the big part when, you're, when you talked about intention. Um, because I think that all of these new thought movement guys, whether it's Tony Robbins or uh, Zig Ziglar or whoever it is, they all have like one fundamental uh, uh, idea that they're always trying to sell at the end of these DVDs, and that is that your mind affects matter, that your intention, your mindset, and that's what they're trying to reverse with like either it's cybernetics or whatever it is. So <clears throat> it was interesting that you had the background and it seemed to, and you seemed to have the knowledge. I don't know. You had the total package. So, I wanted to come. I wanted to come down and find out for myself if it was, if it, who you really were. So I guess that was really the. I had to make up a reason to come meet you. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> so I was like, hey, I'll make a film about him. So. so you yeah. heard a lot about mind. Mind uh, affects matter. Sure. And you wanted the science behind it, which yeah. is what Tom can deliver. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. He had the whole. When he got to the point, when he was explaining it, you know, a lot of guys kind of. I don't know. There's a lot of fluff and razzle dazzle around it, you know, but Tom kind of. He gets the logic of it. That's what's the most fascinating part of it. Everybody has the valuable pieces of the picture, little pieces of the picture. Tom's the only one, I think, that has the complete big picture overview from the science point and from an experience point. And I think you, when you're ready for that, you really pick up on it. Yeah, the experience was another one. Like, so his history with uh, Bob Monroe and remote viewing and all these things, I mean, that was pretty fascinating just to, to encounter a person that not only had was a scientist, but he was also a consciousness explorer and was passionate about it. <laughs> if you could ask Pamela a question, what would that be? If I could ask you a question, what would it be? <clears throat> I know, I don't think I've asked you a question. <laughs> I don't know. I will. I'll pass her the mic once I, if I can, if I can, I can't think of a question to ask me. I can't, yeah. I can't think of a question. I don't know. But I think it's fair to say that, that Pamela is, is, is instrumental in everything that, that, that Tom does that's out there, and he's there always supporting, always there in the background. And it, it's fabulous that, that, that people get to see a little bit of, of Pamela. They, they love to meet her at the workshops, and she stays in the background, but uh, she is as, as much an important part of it as, as Tom is, and, and MBT, uh, MBT events, anyone that's involved, more so, in fact. Yeah, I don't go without Pamela. Pamela can't go, and I can't go. So. She has to make big sacrifices. She has to leave her, her puppy dogs at home. That's right. So, Matt, back to you. You started Love Man. You had an idea. <coughs> it's changed a number of times, right? It's not what it was. And yeah, that's what I was trying to touch on earlier. I, um, um, I didn't really... Like I said, I guess maybe I just wanted to meet Tom was the initial uh, inspiration. So I had to come up with uh, a reason to go see him. So why not do a documentary? That's, the clo that's how you're going to get the closest to him. <laughs> but yeah, um, we've experimented with uh, reenactment footage. You know, maybe we would show the Bob Monroe life and Tom as a young man, but it just... I don't know, it just seems so cheesy. So I'm probably, that, that's all gonna be scrapped. Um, I don't know, maybe that changes and if it works. Uh, like I said, it, it, it started off maybe trying to get into the theory and, and when you sit down and you ask Tom a question, um, if you've noticed from all these uh, YouTube videos, you don't get 20, you know, 250 words or less. It's it's a it's a long process. It's 250 a long, minutes or more. Yeah, 250 minutes <laughs> or more. So when you try to edit that all together, it it becomes a uh, a daunting task. So 
it's seeing Tom in movement that fascinated me more when you look at all the footage. Yeah. It's great to see him sit down and talk about his theory, but that's what you guys do. People can go on YouTube and see that, but to see him in movement, to see him interact, I mean, he's a very fascinating individual we're talking about here. And that's a good point you, you bring up, mate, is that um, you know, a lot of people will say to us, oh, we'll just watch the videos. But it's not the same thing. It's not, it's not the same thing at all. And I don't think people quite understand until they have been. Now you, have, you have been to a live event. It's not just Tom. It's all the other people that are there as well. Yeah. And mo no one, no one has um, been fortunate enough like we have been to see Tom outside of these events. I'm sure people would love to see that. Yeah, you have had you have had some exclusive access, yeah. and you've got some good good shots. And the the time at the um, the, the space and rocket center in the rain, where you managed to somehow fight—it was all meant to be. You found that time with with Tom, and yeah, he uh, was, he that was, was pretty lost. magical. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking lost. looking for Pamela. Yeah, looking for Pamela, because uh, well, at these events, you know, so many people want to talk to you. So yeah. that was the that was the first big challenge. It was like, how do we get them alone? You know. And I don't want to take away from, you know, people spend their money and, you know, they, they, they travel very far to, to be with him. So we were uh, lucky enough to get him alone. And uh, we ended up under the Saturn 1B rocket. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know what we were talking about, but... But it was a tremendous thunderstorm. I mean, that storm was storm, something else. A huge storm just rolled in. And before we knew it, we were in... a. I mean, we were surrounded by water. It was a uh, lightning in the background, very dramatic. Yeah. It was great, great cinematic. Uh, yeah, effect. lightning strike books. <laughs> there's, there's, there's an <laughs> oh, analogy, okay. of course, yeah, right? Sorry. Yeah, but uh, I think the other thing is, I mean, we've we've obviously known you since the the, the first Huntsville event, but you you've told us, and we see it, that you guys have changed. The, the three of you that are the, are the, the filmmakers oh have changed goodness, a great deal. Oh my goodness! Yes. So the first time I came down, um, so like I said, I've never done a documentary, and when I ask questions, I mean you get an answer, but there's no drama to it. So I, I in some ways, was trying to incite some drama or excite some drama in people, and uh, that kind of that kind of backfires when you do that. You just um, Anyway, yeah. Pamela, what, <laughs> what about you, Pamela? What do you hope that people will get out of the, the Love Man documentary? What do you, what do you hope they'll see of, of Tom, the that's person you know? That's a great question. Well, I've never thought about it before, <laughs> Keith. <laughs> so now this is going to be a s off the top uh, answer. I guess just like all of his events, um, I would hope that people are able to learn and grow spiritually, that his exposure to his model helps them and so perhaps the love man movie will help people because they will realize that he is a real person you know he's not really a guru he's not a god he's just you know an everyday scientist who's very interested and, and very passionate about what he does and if they can see how real he is from that documentary i think that would support the rest of the work he does oh that is that is a great answer well done. If that's off the top of your head, brilliant. I, I, I know, right? Um, wow. And you're absolutely right. It, 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 is, it is seeing Tom away from the events. You know, there is a, there is a science presentation that goes on and, and there is a certain conception that people have of Tom when he's at the events. But I think Max and the crew will, um, will certainly be able to show that, that Tom the man um, and his, his home life and his family life. And uh, it's all important parts of, of the, the entire message together. So I think they're doing a brilliant job. I want to move on to another subject and put you on the spot, Pamela. What are you looking forward to about the Cultural Connection Tour? And what are you not looking forward to about the Cultural Connection Tour? I know, you, I know you're going to be away from your animals for a long time <laughs> and there is a lot of flying. But uh, tell me some of the things you're looking forward to. Okay, you're right. You got the not looking forward to. <laughs> I am really, believe it or not, a homebody, and I have um, my grandchildren and my puppy dogs that I focus my life on. Those are my hobbies, and so I have to be away from them for a long time. That's hard on me. Um, but I'm actually looking very forward to the experience. We're going to places I have never seen before, and I love to see new places. So every place we're going, except for New York, we've never 
I've never been, so it's a first. We've been to Germany, but not to where this event is, and we've never done New Zealand, Australia, India. So I'm going to uh, get to see some different parts of the world. And as always, we meet some of the most lovely people at each event. One, I'll get to see some old friends, because we know some people who are coming to, to some of these events that, that we already know. And then we'll get to meet some new people as well. And that's the good thing, isn't it? I mean, you don't think you're going to get to see some of these people. You know, they go back to Australia or New Zealand. You think, that's going to be, that's never going to happen. Right. And, you know, as MBT events, we were always in this thinking, okay, we can do a few events in Europe and, and, and America. But we have been so lucky and so blessed with the people that have helped us that I have bought the tickets early enough to make this all possible for us. So the fact that we are going to Australia and New Zealand, and but as, as Thomas said though, it is a long way to go, and it, w none of us are getting any younger, and it, there's not, there is a chance that we, we won't not get back there. So these people have really got There's a good to, chance there's a we good might chance, not right? get back there. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's it is a long, <laughs> painful trip. I don't even enjoy the trip to Hawaii, which is uh, long for us from where we are. So Australia is going to be a long, painful flight. So I but, guess that's one of the not looking forward to. But you will be there every step of the way supporting your man. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Tom, what, what would you like to say to, to everyone at home about, about Pamela, the one? <laughs> and remember, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> yeah. And it was just her birthday. So be nice. <laughs> well, what else can you say about the one other than that she is the one? That's, the, uh, that's probably the best uh, summary that, uh, that I can make. Pamela has uh, traveled with me to every event that I have done. I've not done an event without her, nor will I. And uh, you know, when, I, when I travel places to do events, I don't uh, charge a fee for, for uh, going and talking, that sort of thing. That's, that's free. I do it because I want to help share information. But I do have one request that's a little expensive, and that is Pamela needs to come with me. So wherever it is I go, there needs to be a ticket for me and a ticket for Pamela, and uh, our, uh, our expenses need to be paid. So that is, I've turned a few things down because that was not acceptable. But that's, uh, that's the price, because I don't go without her, because otherwise, I'd be on the go all the time. She travels a lot. She'd be on the go all the time. And, you know, a couple of days a month, we'd wave at each other as we passed, you know, in a driveway go, coming and going. And that's not good. I won't, I won't go there. So. And there's another thing, you know, when you're at the workshops, if it wasn't for Pamela, you'd still be there at 3, 4 <laughs> o'clock in the morning. She has to get you away. I mean, obviously, everyone wants to talk to you, Tom, yeah. but they have to be also understanding that you are tired. You have done a full day's work, so you do need to get away. And we hope that people will be appreciative and understanding of that and that Pamela doesn't have to literally drag you out of a, yeah. a crowd of bodies. Well, Pamela's only, uh, well, let's put it this way, she's less than five foot, five foot four, uh, doesn't really put her in the, in the realm of being a, a bouncer, but she serves that role wonderfully for me, and I'll be talking, and the break will come. And of course, when the break comes, typically I don't get the break because I have a lot of people that surround me that have questions that they need answered. And as long as I'm able to do that, I will do that. That's sort of the way I am. And Pamela will look at it, and after a couple of breaks, and I haven't gotten out yet, she'll come up and, gr and grab me and tell all the people around me, excuse me, he has to take a break. And of course, they don't dare mess with the one. So uh, they no all one back dares off mess and with she the one. grabs hold of me and leads me out for lunch and back and so on. So uh, she takes good care of me while we're at these events to make sure that I don't uh, stay too long. And Otherwise, do, do you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get to eat. You wouldn't get to go to the bathroom. <laughs> And, and, and you're so in, in tune with each other. That this is true. I'm going to tell people what you, we said the other day is that is when you were in L.A., she came over, she changed your battery pack on your microphone, and you were so used to it, and it just, you didn't even notice it had been done. No. It just happened. No. Just <laughs> yeah, I, after it was, she'd already changed the battery pack. This thing sitting right here on my hip, tied to my belt, underneath of my jacket, so that I had to pull that aside. Um, we were just getting ready to start again, and I said, oh, Pamela, we probably need to change these batteries. And she says, I've already done that. So that lets you know I'm very focused on the people. 
and communicating with them and understanding where they are and where their heads are and the, the roots of their questions so that I can give them an answer that's significant. So I'm busy when I'm, when I'm doing that. My mind is focused on them, their question, their issues, what really is driving that question, you know, what's behind the question so that I can give them an answer that, that suits them. And uh, never noticed her uh, changing batteries in this uh, transmitter on my hip. So that's one of the things that uh, Pamela has to live with, of course, that uh, I get very focused on things. And when I do, you know, sometimes you need to come up and shake me to get my attention. Otherwise, I'm not there. I'm doing other things, other reality frames, yeah. other times, and uh, I'm a little hard to, to uh, sometimes to get my attention. I think the other thing, pe uh, Tom, that people don't realize is how much preparation you put into a workshop. I mean, it takes away from your family life. You do have a big extended family. You love, you love all your family. You see them on a regular basis, but you do have a lot. You have so many emails you have to answer. There are other things that are going on. Uh, you, you, you know, you do have a family life, but your preparation for each of these workshops, when they are long, is, is something else. And then you do focus on each question and, and it happened in the fireside chat the other day someone asked a question they were not expecting just how personal the answer was and it, it's very unique that you can actually give an answer like you've said to us many times before and and to people on camera that not only is personal to them but also everyone can understand and get something out of the answer that you give so there's a lot going on yeah, there is a lot going on and i did do a lot of preparation particularly for uh the MBTLA event that was just done, what, a week and a half ago, um, yeah, maybe two weeks ago. And uh, that was more difficult because I was presenting these physics experiments. And a physics experiment isn't like um, talking about metaphysics or philosophy or even talking about physics. You know, that you can kind of off the cuff do very easily. You don't have to be real precise. It's a matter of communication in general terms. But when you talk about physics experiments, just, you know, general terms doesn't cut it. You have to be absolutely precise down to the last detail of what it is you're talking about and uh, all of the consequences of what it is that you're talking about and how it goes together. So that took me a while just to figure out how was I going to present this. I didn't want, I had a general audience. The general audience doesn't want to sit and listen to me talk about physics all day. Some of them, that would be the delight of their life, but most of them, that would be pain, you know, that they didn't want to have to suffer through. Most, at least half of my people, or two-thirds of them, are there because of the metaphysics and the philosophy, not the physics. So I was going to present physics all day Saturday, and I needed to do this in a way that skipped a lot of the detail but yet had all the detail there for the people who were interested. And how was I going to do that? That took me a while to figure that out. But I, I did come up with a plan where what I did was really introduce the experiments, explain them enough that anybody could just kind of follow along in layman's terms of what was going on and why, you know, why these experiments were interesting and what the results would be and what that had to do with the big picture of reality anyway. But I left all the the little details out, but I put them on the slides. The slides were sometimes down as low as 10 and 12 point type. Of course, nobody could read a slide that's 10 point type. You'd have to be standing two feet away from the screen to be able to read it. But when the, when the uh, video gets put out on YouTube, it'll be like reading a Word document. All right, it's 12 point type, but so is your Word document, or even 10 point type because you'll fill up the whole screen with it because the, the slide will take the whole screen then and it'll be easy to read. So those people that really want detail will get it out of the video in lots of detail. And those people sitting in the audience didn't have to go through all that detail, which is important to the, to the scientists who might be interested in it. So that was the way I did that. But I'd say I put in a month of working probably no less than 10, you know, no more than 15 hours a day, seven days a week to put all that together. 
and do the graphics. Of course, I don't have anybody, I don't have a graphics department doing my uh, slides for me. You know, I have to put all those together. And it uh, took me a while to figure out just what I was going to say, how I was going to say it. And then I had another day to, uh, to do. My second day, which was Sunday, was, uh, you know, why should I care? You know, what, what difference does it make? Okay, you know, MBT does physics, but so what? What's, Im what's really important? What's important to me about that? How does it affect my life? You know, my view of reality, what I do. So that was then the second day on Sunday. And uh, probably shouldn't admit to this, but the, uh, the physics part took me so long to put together, and I changed it so many times and did it and redid it until it was the way I liked it, that I didn't really prepare anything for the second day. And when I walked up to the podium on the second day and it was time to speak, I just started someplace and it went wherever it went. I had a subject, which is why should I care? You know, what's important to this about, about this to me? But I had prepared absolutely nothing. You know, and there were no slides, but you don't have to have slides when you're talking about that subject. It's not something you need diagrams to you know, show people how things connect to each other. It's not that complex. So that was just off the cuff, off the top of my head, and it worked out perfectly. It was, uh, I don't know, it took a few hours, but uh, it, just, it just happened. But otherwise, had I not had to put so much prep time in it, I would have had something prepared for that as well. I would have had an outline and all the topics I wanted to hit, but I think I got to all of them anyway. And you pretty much do all this for free. I mean, people say, oh, why is it, well, you know, but you put your, your material out on YouTube for free. You right. want the message to go out, and that's important to you. So you do all this work for free. And people don't understand, I mean, you had a day job, you know, Pamela has a day job. I had a day job. Congratulations. <laughs> but Still um, has a day job. sort of, yeah, um, yeah. But you, you, you do. You put it out for free because it's, it's, it's important. Yeah, that's true. No, I have never charged to go go a, do an event anywhere. That's not the point. And I've been offered fees sometimes, but I say no. That's not really why I'm here. It's, it's. Uh, I do require that the travel be paid for because I don't have that much excess money that I can buy airplane tickets to fly around the world to uh, you know, give talks to people. I can't do that. I can't afford that. But uh, yes, I put a lot of time into this because I get somewhere between three and 500 emails every day. And that takes a lot of time. Now some of them, some of those are just junk email like everybody gets. But there's enough of them that require some thought and require answers because the people that ask them you know, have a very serious issue, something they don't understand, something that's confusing, something that's a problem. And I can't just not look at that or blow it off. Now, if they're just asking a question that I've already answered 15 times you know, that's on YouTube, I'll let that go. I won't bother with that one. I'll go on because they need to research a little, not just ask a question because that's easier for them. It's not easier for me to answer those kinds of questions because I got so much and a lot of the email are, well, I shouldn't say a lot of them, but say 10% of them are kind of life and death matters to people, you know, really serious things. And I need to not miss any of those. And I have interviews and, you know, I get every week I do three or four different interviews and podcasts and that kind of thing. I have to go through all these emails to sort which ones are important, which ones aren't. Then the ones that are important, I got to answer. But these aren't the kind of questions you answer in three lines. You know, it's not like, you know, have a, have a good day, hope you're well. You know, I got to get into their head and understand what it is they need and what it is I can give them and give them directions or whatever they whatever they need as best I can. So I work probably harder than I did when I was making money. I was being paid by the hour to work, you know. I'm probably working as much if not more now. I do take time to exercise that I didn't then, but other than that, I'm busy. Yeah. Pamela's real busy. She still works for a living and uh, that will end in a couple of months. About two months. And he says he's going to retire again when I retire. So let's see what happens. <laughs> yes, that's true. I need to do that. 
because whenever Pamela has a holiday or a day like she gets Friday, every other Friday off, whenever she has a holiday and stays home, I don't get much done those days. And it's not because Pamela bothers me. It's because I want to hang out with Pamela, you see. So it's not that she gets in my way and I can't get work done. It's that I get in her way and uh, we, uh, you know, we hang out together. We enjoy the time we spend together. And when she retires and comes home full time, well, every day is going to be a holiday. So I think I'll probably going to have to retire too. Not do quite so much as I did before because I just won't have the time for it. I'll be spending a lot more time daily with Pamela and that is very important to me. And, and so it should be and hopefully people will understand when they send you emails that they won't always get a response if they do try to send you emails or, or make requests because you will uh, wind down a little bit. Likewise, MBT events, we've never done it for money. Um, we've only ever done it for the belief in the work and uh, we get to hang out with you guys and we've been very fortunate. Um, we, I have to say at this moment in time, well done to Dagda and thank you to Dagda. A lot of people say they want to put on an event and for whatever reason it doesn't come through. She did come through and she put on something that was marvellous, uh, very well received, great audience. Um, and probably one of your most important, if not the most important presentations you've ever done. So well done for that. Yeah, I uh, don't want to uh, do less, but there's only certain many hours in a day and you have to uh, do what you can. It's most important. And Pamela comes near the top of that list. Grandkids, you know, come near the top of that list. Kids come near the top of that list. And then comes... MBT and you know doing those sorts of things. On the other hand, we'll probably be able to travel a little more because one of the things that was keeping us home was the fact that Pamela has a job to go to and you know she has to go in and put in her hours, only get so much leave. And that was a pretty big inhibitor on us moving around to give talks at various places. So that will be better. And as long as we go together, then we got that one checked too. The only problem there is puppy dogs and grandchildren. Puppy dogs and grandchildren are very high on Pamela's priority list, and that may keep us uh, home a little bit of the time, but we may be more, more flexible in our traveling in the future, but probably less flexible on the amount of email that gets answered. I'll still try to sort through for the ones that are most critical. But there's a lot of details, like uh, you know, the email I get, Tom, then does that mean that if you, know, you replace the observer with a monkey that it would still you know, make the, uh, the uh, distribution become a, you know, a, a, be a uh, two-bar distribution instead of a, you know, that sort of thing. I get a lot of those, which are interesting questions. And if it was in a form someplace where I was answering questions, I'd be glad to answer it. But they take a lot of time to type. It's not something the person doesn't want me to say yes or no. They really would like an explanation of how things work. And you can't do that in less than a half an hour, an hour. And I just can't do that for those kinds of questions. So those are almost going to disappear entirely after Pamela retires and I won't be able to get to though, I just happen to have a question. I listened to one of your videos and I don't understand this, can you answer? And people are just gonna have to go find it on other videos because most of those questions have already been answered many times on the videos. But on the other hand, I feel a lot of empathy for people who say, oh yeah, just go find it on YouTube when there's 350 videos on YouTube and you say, well, it's one, one of those 350 videos, you know, go find it. That's not exactly a nice thing to say either. See, that's no. tough. And um, the MBTLA video, Justin, again, we have to thank Justin. He is the one editing that. He's going to get that out. People will be able to see that. The physics experiments, we're going to send those DVDs out to a whole bunch of academia who might be interested in doing those experiments. And that is really exciting times for MBT. Tom, we're losing the light, so I think we better kind of wrap this up. I want to thank Max for Love Man. Um, it's going to be brilliant. But also thank you for giving us a place to film this. Uh, it means a great deal to us. And we look forward to having you on the road with us at The Cultural Connection. Pamela, I just thank you for being the one and always being there to support Tom. And Tom, well, we thank you for everything.
And thank you, Keith, and thank you, Donna. Thank you are MBT Events, and without you, we wouldn't be anywhere. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. It always has been. Thanks, Tom and Pamela and Max. Okay, we're done then. It's a wrap.